What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered what you could learn about Fiend Designer in just five minutes? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen and in the next five minutes, I am going to get you started learning all about Affinity Designer. The first thing that you need to know about Affinity Designer is what Affinity Designer is. Now, Affinity Designer is a vector illustration program similar to Adobe Illustrator. So, the types of things you're going to do in Affinity Designer are things like graphic design and illustration. Now, you could do some document layout here as well and a little bit of photo manipulation because unlike Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Designer actually has a pixel persona where you can do pixel work as well. Really the photo work is best left to Affinity Photo and the document layout work is best left to Affinity Publisher, which are all part of the same Affinity suite. The next thing that you might want to know is where is it available? Well, Affinity Designer is available on Windows, Mac, and iPad, all three of those operating systems, and you might want to know how much it's going to cost you. Well, Affinity Designer is a single purchase license, so unlike Adobe Illustrator, it's not a subscription, just a single purchase license, and that's going to cost you about $70. Now, the other thing to consider is whether you're on iPad. If you're on iPad, then that's going to cost you just about $20. Now, I'm not associated with Affinity in any way, I'm just letting you know the information on the pricing here. We've taken about a minute to talk about what it is. Now let's go ahead and get started talking about how it works. All right, now that we're here in Affinity Designer, I want to real quick introduce you to the interface so that you understand where everything is in the layout here. So on the left-hand side, we have our tools. These are very similar to the tools inside of any vector illustration program. And today we're going to talk specifically about shape tools down here and the pen tool up here in just a minute. Up here at the top, you have a contextual toolbar. So you've got things that will change depending on what you're selected on. So if I change to the pen tool, these options change up here. Right above that, you have a quick access toolbar that has access to a lot of actions that you need regularly. For example, if you like things to snap together, that's this little magnet here. You can turn that on and off right here. You also have quick access to simple transforms like flip and rotate. Okay, on the right hand side, you have your studio panels. These are really important for dealing with the details of things. So we've got things done with color, and our swatches, our stroke, and our appearance. We also have layers. Layers are super important in any of these design computer programs. This is how you order the stacking of the different objects there. So you've got that over here and you've got a transform panel. Now there's a bunch of different panels that you can have here. The other thing to know about is the artboard. The artboard's where you do all your work. So right here in the middle of the screen, you can see I have two artboards, one with art on it and one that is currently blank so that I can show you some things. We're not going to talk about every tool, but let's talk about the shape tools and the pen tool. So you can see we have some simple shape tools here, a rectangle, a circle, and a shape tool that has a whole bunch of different options here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I would do this castle. Let's just grab the rectangle here. We're going to drag out a rectangle. If we want to keep it as a perfect square, we'll hold down shift, but we don't want that right now. We just want a rectangle, so let's do that. And then we're going to draw out a couple more rectangles. To zoom in, I'm going to hold down option and scroll, draw out a couple more rectangles here. Make sure I turn on my snapping right there with the magnet. To duplicate, I will just hold down option on my keyboard and click and drag so that I can duplicate that. Hold down shift to keep it in alignment so I can get these to go exactly where I want them to be. Now that I have these all lined up here, the next thing that's really important with shapes is combining them together. So I'm gonna go ahead and select them all. And then you can see my quick access toolbar at the top. I can go ahead and click this add button to combine them together. You also have subtract and different combine options here. I'm gonna click add and then I have my castle. Every shape in Affinity Designer has a stroke, an outline, and a fill. Now you can set that to be nothing. Say I didn't want this to have a stroke. I come up here to my swatches make sure that my stroke, the outline is on top and click the circle with the red line through it. That gets rid of that. If I want it to have a fill, say I want it to all be gray, I could swap my fill to the front and click on a gray. And now it has a gray fill. To get a gradient the way I have over here, you use the fill tool, which is one of these tools midway through the left-hand side. You grab that, click and drag to create a gradient fill, and then you can swap out the colors on it. The next thing that you want to know about is the pen tool. Places that I've used the pen tool over in this design here are the lightning bolts and the road and the little stonework in here, as well as this little island hill. So the pen tool is a really, really useful tool, but it's also one of the most frustrating tools. The deal with the pen tool in any vector program is that you just have to practice with it and practice with it a lot. You need to understand that when you click, it's going to lay down a vector point, and then it's going to lay down more vector points each time you click. You are not going to click and drag to draw a line the way you would with an actual pen because that won't work. This is what happens then. So this just means that you are making it a curve instead of a straight point. For example, let me go ahead and delete that. If I want to draw a lightning bolt, I'm going to just lay down my points like this. 
Okay, and I'm not going to worry about curves because there is no curves in the lightning bolt. So now I've drawn that lightning bolt, I'm going to go ahead and add a stroke to it, just like we did with the other shape. And I can go over to my stroke panel. Remember, this is where we deal with the details of things and I can make that thicker and bigger. So that's how you can draw things with the pen tool. So if I want to do this hill over here, I'm just going to click to lay down the first point and then where I want the next point to be, I'm going to click and drag. Now, if I wanted this curve to continue, I could leave this handle as is, but I'm going to click on it again to get rid of that so that I can get a new curve coming out right here. And that's how I'll get my hill in place here. To get out of here, I'll just hit escape. So I understand that the pen tool can be really confusing and difficult for a lot of people. It was for me when I first started working with vectors. The key is to practice, practice, practice with it. That's the only way to get better at it. Okay, I hope that you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about Affinity Designer. And obviously you can't learn everything there is to know about Affinity Designer in five minutes. It's just a huge program with a lot going on. So I really recommend that if you're interested in this, you look down in the description below and you take one of my courses. My courses are available on Skillshare or on Gumroad. If if you choose a Gumroad course, you can use the code YT15 to get it for just $15. I've got courses covering everything from the basics all the way up to things like isometric design and retro postcard design. So go ahead and check those out below. Now I would love to hear from you. What do you think about Affinity Designer? What do you use it for? We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.